Hi, I'm Ollie from White Quest Interviews. I'm here at Hip City Island Records today, joined by Rob. Uh, so thank you very much for being on today. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. So, um, first of all, what were your earliest memories of music as a youngster? Um, I used to listen to my dad's records when I was five or six, and we had some Beatles records and some Motown and stuff like that. You know, and that kind of got me into music. So I kind of started liking records from an early age. Uh, what type of artists and sounds were you first drawn towards? Well, the 60s stuff, I mean, I was born in the 60s, but I was kind of listening to stuff in, in the 70s, but I was listening to older stuff, so listening to stuff from, you know, the previous generation, you know, the, the 60s has always been my kind of thing. I like that that kind of sound and, yeah. and uh, drawn to that, really. It's good music. What was the first record that you bought and when was that? The first record I bought myself was My Girl by Madness, which I heard on Swap Shop, I think, Noel Edmonds Swap Shop, and uh, and I thought that's a great song, and I just went down to the local uh, record shop and, and bought it. But I did own a few records before that that had been given to me by people, yeah. you know. So, but the first one I bought myself was that. So. Uh... When did you first listen to music in a wider social setting? I suppose, you know, when you get to sort of 16, 17 and you start going out to clubs and you meet other people and, you know, I kind of got into the mod scene and because of the mod scene, you know, you it's all around clothes and music and, and so I used to go to clubs with youth clubs and stuff with other mods and you just listen to whatever was being played at the time which would have been probably two-tone stuff the jam and old 60s stuff you know it's fantastic so uh, what was your first memories of DJs and the nightlife uh, well even from a, an early age I thought oh that looks good I want to do I want to DJ and I, I, I got into DJing myself really young you know probably 17 I was DJing at the local youth clubs you know with a limited amount of records that I had taking them down there and you know, playing, playing things, you know, for other people's enjoyment. I just quite like it. How did your influence develop over the time? Because because of the mod scene, you know, I used to go to a lot of gigs, see live bands, uh, a lot of kind of small bands that were just sort of, you know, I first saw the jam and, and madness, but, but then I started going to a lot of small gigs where you get like 100 people, you know, small world and, you know, the times and, and bands that you've probably never heard of because, you know, you were quite young uh, and they never they weren't successful. But, you know, I used to go and see those bands, the Prisoners. I mean, they were always a good crowd, good, had a good crowd and a good following. But they weren't, they weren't like stadium gigs, they're just small gigs. And that got me into, like, you know, going out to things and then, obviously, mod clubs where everyone dressed up smart and they play rhythm and blues and reggae and soul and I got into that and then the Northern Soul thing from the 100 Club and the M Club so um, that was kind of where that led um, and, and, and then I, you know obviously I wanted a I suppose my influence developed into more into soul music from that rhythm and blues at first and then soul so uh, when did you first become a collector of records well I pretty much started collecting from day one really I mean I used to when I was at school I used to ask my mates at school probably the age of what 12 13 if their if their mums and dads had any records that they didn't want and you know I'd go around their houses and go from all oh, the who all the small faces and I'd say I mean I might most probably miss some great stuff because I had no knowledge then but anything that looked interesting I'd say well can I have this or sometimes I used to buy them off them and you know but but generally they used to just give them to me because I was only a kid and I suppose they just thought this is nice, let this, let this kid enjoy the music. So, you know, I got some interesting things that way. Well, what did you first collect as like a type of genre and why was well, that? Well, I suppose firstly I started collecting the jam really and, 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 and madness. They were my sort of two favourite bands. So I'd go to like our local shop that sold imports and I'd buy the Japanese version or the, you know the European version with different picture covers and stuff like that just to as a sort of collector's point of view, but eventually you think I've got 10 copies of the same song with like a slightly different picture cover or a different record label and, and I, I thought well, there's not really any point in that, you know, so I, I just, I've still got a lot of that stuff but I, I kind of just started collecting more widely. Diversity. Yeah, diversifying, exactly. Yeah. So um, tell us about your mod scene uh, back in the years. Uh, well, like I said, started off going to a little youth club around our way, 
uh, all the scooter clubs used to go there and it was Northern Soul and that kind of got me into that music and then I used to go to the sort of mod clubs in London the Phoenix Club was probably the one that really was good for me um, sort of the guy there who used to DJ Toski he had an amazing record collection of like British label 60s soul and it's just the most incredible stuff that you just couldn't find anywhere else and that was just you know fantastic and we used to make notes and then we'd go out the weekend trying to find them and you know so that's kind of where I got sort of that R&B influence from there and then then I used to go to the 100 Club which was a Northern Soul do in Oxford Street and you know there's always people selling records there so you, you'd be listening to the music oh have you got this one and then you could sometimes go and buy it if, yeah. if they had it you know off the dealers and you know that's how I started collecting through that scene. So your love for all things soul, is it a passion? Oh definitely, yeah, definitely passionate about soul music, love it, yeah, can't, can't get enough of it, you always want to hear, hear more, discover more, find more songs you don't know about, you know, and um, plethora of music out there you're never going to hear, so you've always got something more to find. How did you come to own a record shop? I used to buy and sell records from a little record box in the club, then it was a bigger box, then it was a bigger box, and eventually I just had too many records and I used to deal online and you know do record lists in the mail, and then I just had so many records knocking around I opened a shop, you know. Um, I did record fairs in, in before the shop, but uh, you know, eventually I opened a shop and now here I am on the Isle of Wight with a shop. So what kind of stuff do you sell and uh, is it popular? Records have definitely become more popular in the last five, ten years. Uh, people are starting to realise, you know, the sound sound is good. It's a warmer sound when you listen to vinyl than it is on a CD. Uh, I mean, there was a time when CDs got really popular. Vinyl was on the decline, uh, but people realised over time that actually CDs are just a bit tinny and you know they haven't got the depth and warmth of, of a vinyl. And and not only that. You, you, they're bigger, so you get sleeve notes, and the you know the artwork is better than on a tiny little thing like this. You know, small isn't always better. So um, yeah, I think vinyl is definitely becoming more popular, and the kind of music that I sell, I mean, anything I can get my hands on, really. I mean, I kind of tend to like personally 60s soul, rhythm and blues, a bit of reggae, and I sell that. But I will sell you know rock stuff. Jazz, blues, folk, country, you know, whatever people want. If I can find it, I'll get it, you know, and and, and sell it, you know, but it's not always easy to find what people want. But I, I'm, I, I'm up for anything, I'm up for any any musical genre, I will try and stock. Oh, that's good to hear. Has the internet changed what you do, and if so, how? It definitely has changed it because um, a lot of people buy online now, and I think certainly things that we thought were, were were rare you know some of the things that used to be oh that's a rare record that's worth 50 60 quid 100 pound whatever maybe they're not as rare as we thought because they just turn up in a lot online you know and then and other things which maybe you thought weren't that special suddenly are it's it definitely helps to discover things as well because with you know if, if people were to put a discography of a label on there for example and you you like some of the records on that label you can then find other records that are on that label or, or of that genre that you think oh actually I, I like that yeah that's all good that stuff you know it could be like a 60s soul label like Motown say you might say well I like some of that Motown stuff and then you want to discover what other records are on Motown so you can look them up online and think oh I don't know that one what's that like and you can often listen to them on YouTube you know all that internet stuff has kind of made me so much more accessible when I used to go to record fairs you know if I was looking for the impressions say you know Curtis Mayfield and the impressions you know I dig through but do I know this one? Oh no I don't know that ever listen to it or do I like it yes no whereas now if you wanted like my daughter discovered the impressions she's just downloaded every song they done and listened to them all and decided which one she liked straight away in, in, in a couple of hours, you know? Whereas that would have taken me years to go to record fair, find this one, oh, I don't know that one, you know? And, you know, you know, so it's made it so much more accessible 
to find music and and with things like YouTube you know YouTube you could play a song on YouTube and then another one pops up that they think you might like based on that and and you can discover new songs like even I discover new songs like that and uh, you know I've been buying records forever you still discover new stuff and I think that's good about the internet on the other hand sometimes it's it, it kind of it kills it a little bit because people come in the shop and they go oh you've got this for ten pound I can buy it online for six I say, well, go and buy online for six. You don't know what condition it's going to be. You're looking, it's in your hand. Buy it. You know what I mean? But so you, you, you got, it's a double-edged sword. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. Uh, do you buy people's collections and old records? I'm always buying stuff. I mean, I buy stuff every day if I can. Um, you know, I often go digging around charity shops or uh, car boot sales or, you know, jumble. So anywhere that might have records, you know, uh, and I, I advertise a bit, I mean not enough, but I do advertise a bit and sometimes people come in the shop and say, well I've got a record collection, do you want to buy it? And sometimes you might only want to buy a small fraction of it and sometimes you buy it all. Just depends what it is, you know. Uh, we're always looking, always looking to buy stuff from the 50s to the 2000s, I guess. How many days, may I ask, are you open a week? I open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But I don't know, if maybe in the summer I might try opening them other days see what, how it goes what time frame um it's open from 11 till 5. fantastic so have you found or uncovered any final gems oh over the years i've found loads of interesting things yeah i mean recently i found this tubby hayes album that's playing um which is a great rare british jazz album um i found the zombies lp which i think is up there somewhere um, I'm always digging things. One of my favourite ever finds was when I years ago, when I before I was selling professionally, you know, I used to dabble in selling. But I'm always a more of a collector than a seller. Anyway, I went into a charity shop, and uh, I worked for Essex Water at the time. And I was reading the meters, and I said to him, "I'll come to read the meter." He said, "Oh yeah, it's out the back." I said, "I said I'll just go." And get someone to take you out back. I went, okay, I'll just look at these records while, while you're doing that. I start looking at these records they got. There's a little pile of singles there. And there, there was some really good stuff in there. And I was just about to sort of buy, buy some of them. And they went, oh yeah, they're ready now. So I had to go and read the meter. And I was like, I hope no one comes in and buys them. And I was out reading the meter quick so I could get back. And um, I, they had in there a, a record by a guy called Tony Middleton called To the Ends of the Earth. On uh, on Polydor, which is super rare record, and uh, it was 10p, so it went straight in my collection. Uh, but that is one of my best ever finds. So, how big is your own personal collection now? Uh, I probably got uh, over 5,000 singles and probably a thousand LPs or so thereabouts, maybe more. Uh, it's, I don't really count, but there's a lot of stuff, and it takes up a lot of room, much to my wife's chagrin. <laughs> Do you DJ yourself and uh, what kind of events do you do? Yeah, I do DJ. I run a, I run a, a, an event on the Isle of Wight at the Scooter Rally um, called The Happening in Ride Castle. We do it every year, August Bank Holiday. I, I did used to run some things in, in South End when I lived in Essex. Um, and there are plans afoot to run some things over on the Isle of Wight, but we haven't kind of really kind of got into it yet. I mean, me and my friend Alan, we're going we're gonna to try and put a few things on and uh, hopefully get a, a little crowd. How big a watch? Watch this space. Uh, so what future plans do you have for the Isle of Wight and Hip City? Uh, well, obviously that, uh, you know, putting on putting on a few events um, and, you know, just getting the shop more well known about. Um, yeah, obviously uh, we're going to try and do some events, uh, some Northern Soul nights, maybe some R&B mod nights, who knows. Um, I, I hope to DJ a few things while I'm here on the Isle of Wight and uh, you know, get some things going there. Uh, we're going to have a launch party for the shop. Obviously, I want to get the shop a bit more well known about. It, it's This shop's been here for a long time, 20, 25, 30 years, between 25 and 30 years. The previous owner sadly passed away and I, and I bought the building off of him and, and I've done it up and made it hopefully a bit more accessible than it was. Um, and people hopefully can have a, a good browse and maybe buy some stuff. Or, or just come in and chat and have a coffee, you know. Um, I want to make it more of a sort of place where we can just come and chat about music and don't have to necessarily have to buy anything, but we can just have a chin wag and talk about, you know, whatever you want. Blues, jazz, soul, reggae, rock and roll. You know, just, just a place to come and 
enjoy music. Uh, may I ask, uh, do you have a planned date for that, or is it just in the works? Uh, it's going to be sometime in December we're going to have a, have a launch party. Watch this space. So, um, I know this will be a hard question for you, but um, what's your current top five spins? What I thought was I'd make a note of some of the things I've bought recently, you know, that, that kind of uh, float my boat, uh, if anybody wants to check them out on YouTube. So, The Kings of Soul is Your Love For, for Me is, uh, is one that's a great record that I've got recently. Um, Hopeton Lewis, which is a great reggae record called uh, Let Me Come Home. And uh, Tiny Topsy, After Marriage Blues. Johnny Taylor doing Ain't That Loving You. And uh, I finally got a British copy, which is really hard to find, of uh, Raindrops, Love and Sunshine by Robert John. So tell us about your online presence. Uh, well, I do sell stuff online as well. I don't like to put all the good stuff online. You know, I put stuff on there. Quite often what I'll put online is things I think maybe haven't got a massive following for, for the general public in the shop. Um, so, but I, 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 put, I like to put good stuff in the shop so when people come in there's good stuff to look at. Um, so I, I sell on Discogs and I sell on eBay and Music Stack. Um, and then sometimes I put things on Facebook Marketplace, but not very often. You can find me in those places if you search Hip City. Um, and you can see the links underneath this video. If you're paying with cash, you can get a discount with Ollie Whitequest. So Rob, a uh, couple more questions for you. Do you have any more interest in hobbies or interests? Um, I like to do a bit of acting if I can, occasionally. You know, I used to used to do a bit. Maybe I'll start doing it again now on the island, but uh, got to find the right agent. Yeah, I'll kind of put that to bed for the minute, but... I see. What what have you done, acting-wise? Oh, I've, a lot. I've done a few little movies and some TV adverts and, you know, this and that, you know, but nothing amazing. I, 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 it's always kind of partly on the back burner for the, for the future. But, you know, I'm getting older. I've got to play granddads now instead of dads. So, Rob, uh, to finish uh, the interview off, could you tell us a decent joke? Uh, can I tell you a joke? Um, well, the only joke you can tell if you're a, a record dealer is um, how does Bob Marley like his donuts? We jam in, we jam in. Or maybe even, you know, how do Oasis like their, their, their chips? I want to roll with it, I want to roll with it. Great, thank you very much Rob for the interview. Cheers. Yeah.